I'm trying to catch as many interceptions as possible in my freshman season. Be a turnover machine. Be the greatest to ever played this game. As a freshman, I'm the number two corner on the depth chart, working my way up to that number one spot. And once I get there, I can guard every single team's best receiver every week. But let me address the elephant in the room. How does the number one player in the country wind up at USF when I had offers from every big time power five school that you can think of? After my senior season ended in tragedy, losing in the state playoffs and losing a lot of money to the guys around the neighborhood, I had to clear some favors. All the dudes from around the way, they bet money on that game and lost, they found me responsible. So it was either my life or I get out there, hit the block and get that bread back. I was damn near paid up. I had to head off up there to Colorado, play for Coach Prime as a true freshman and dominate. But one night, I was really trying to get it all off. On the block, way longer than usual. I got hit with a random stop and frisk. Possession charges, intent to sell. I got hit with a lot. And once word got out that I got picked up by the police, mug shot plastered across social media everywhere. Every school that offered me pulled out. I was back to square one. I had nothing. And in the nick of time, right before the cutoff for me to enroll in school so I can even be able to play my freshman season came, one school came knocking. USF was the only program to still offer me an opportunity to come in and play as a freshman. Everybody else just kind of x me out. Now I'm in kill mode. After catching two picks in our season opener in the very next practice making a few plays, I'm already labeled, started, stamped that number one corner spot. It's a few things that's going to get your name mentioned with some of the great cornerbacks when it's all said and done, but the main one is getting your hands on that football, picking up an interception early against Michigan State. We come in this week as underdogs to a 0-1 Michigan State team. We're on the roll, but I feel like that's kind of disrespectful. I mean, last week we did only play FCS West and we blew them boys out, but the media gave us no chance of winning this game coming in this week. Going with the pitch on first down, I fake got two big blockers to get around and drop my shoulder on their running back and at this point they just continue to pound the ball away even on second and long they don't learn their lesson about putting that ball in the air and that's the goal for our defense force them to put the ball on the ground dominate them and when they do put it in the air we're gonna come down with it every time i think we got an underrated group not just defensively or dbs but as a whole our team we're gonna shock a lot of people this season empty gun look four split wide i know it's a pass playing off my zone the second i see this five yard curl i'm coming down 360 one-handed to the crib for my first career pick six if i'm taking a straight shot into the backfield with the worst angle possible giving up the touchdown we in regulation tied up now we in overtime coming off the edge after everything up the middle is clogged up laying that wood on this running back without all out blitzing here on the goal line it would be damn near impossible to get a stop they walk in and get the first touchdown of ot nines on the defense third and nine we trying to get back got everything up the field covered for a second at least i thought right over the top picking up the touchdown we walk out of here in a double overtime thriller with the l we got FIU at the crib this week in a rain game. They kicked this one off with a crazy damn near 20-yard run. Right back at it on first down. Even though I got teammates hot on his trail, I got to make these open field tackles personal. Even though we pretty solid up front and I believe in the big boys, dog, they running straight at us on first and second down, damn near averaging 10 a pop. But as a corner, games like this, you got to be disciplined. At any given moment, they can throw it right at you. Because teams like this, they'll ground and pound as much as they can and then throw the ball right at you when you least expect it. That's how they make their big plays. But like I said, throwing it when you least expect it, cutting off this lane, getting the interception, textbook coverage offense want to put some points on the board now as a defense we got to step up and execute they keep running the ball down our throat non-stop and as crazy as it may sound as dominant as i know our defensive front is we're not showing it whatsoever today getting absolutely manhandled up there a key fourth and six situation trying to lock my man down i gotta dig deep to get downhill to cut this ball off picking up my second interception of the game that's how you step up and make a play i made the big play offense went down and put some points on the board but that ain't gonna stop fiu from marching they way back down and walking into the end zone untouched though final play of the game three seconds on the clock offense done went and did it again putting us up we get back in the coverage they launch this one towards the end zone we come away with the game ceiling pick we got undefeated Miami, and all week coming into this game, we've been doubted, but I love it. Getting back into my zone, picking this receiver off, straight up mossing him like I'm the one running the routes. Ain't no better way to start a game than with a pick like that, but they come right back at us the next possession with a crazy catch and run. Dude was sliding into the end zone. I couldn't even get over there in time. And right back towards the end of the first quarter, they knocking it out, though. Fourth and inches, I'm going to play some heavy off, man, knowing this QB going to try me. And on cue, I'm getting over, toe tapping this pick. I caught that bit like I'm the receiver yet again. Miami's a good team, but offense still can't get nothing clicking not the multiple turnovers that I've created. Make that three in the first half. Another pick from the other side of the field for my dog. They might as well just hand the ball off to their best player. Tell them just go. Because at this point, it's a highlight reel no matter who has the ball in their hand. I got to come all the way across the field, make the tackle. But I create a force fumble going out of bounds. And for what seems like the fifth or sixth time, just in three quarters, bro, Miami is right back in the red zone trying to punch another one in. And on first and goal, I'm doing everything I can to bait up this receiver, make him look open as much as I possibly can trying to get this pick. But the QB doesn't learn 
learned this lesson. He diving his way in, picking up the tutty. As a defense to hold a top 20 team to only 17 points through three entire quarters and for our offense to put up nothing this whole time is flat out disheartening. Even though we have an entire fourth quarter to go, I don't see nothing changing. At this point as a defense dog, the best we can do is try to keep this score manageable and respectable. Hopefully they pull their starters in a minute. Number 11 ranked undefeated Cincy at the crib in front of a packed out crowd. This can get interesting. I'm out here playing this off man trying to bait up these routes like one of the greatest ball hawking cornerbacks I've ever seen, Asante Samuel, one of the players I model my game after. Got deep zone coverage on the wide side of the field, trying to jump this route underneath. He turns it back upfield, shooting straight from my zone. I get in position, secure the pick. With my speed and skill set, I can make up for any possible mistake. And in my humble opinion, that's the stuff you can't teach. Giving up my zone completely, coming down, locked in on making the big play underneath, getting back to my zone, securing the pick, just next level stuff. Back to the man coverage on second down. I got a speedy slot receiver. I'm so focused on protecting my inside leverage. He got nothing but free real estate on the outside. I give up a crucial touchdown. Now, it's one thing to give up the big play and zone covers where everybody in the secondary has to be on the same page, but when you're solely responsible for giving up a touchdown, it hit a little different. And after scoring that once, three minutes left in the half, Cincinnati gonna walk their way in for another to take a seven point lead. And the big play they're trying to make before the half on Nate end just continue to roll on. They're running back, catch this ball, and he just takes off, pick up the first down, making his mark. And anytime you let a running back get some momentum, it's pretty hard to stop him, especially when they're trying to make their presence felt. I gotta fly across the field, make a hit, let them know this ain't that. I thought I made a statement. Coming across the field, making that tackle, but he makes one of his own. Coming up the gut, untouched into the end zone for the touchdown. We down two scores in the beginning of the third. Home crowd is dead silent. We needed this tackle and fumble more than ever. This was the perfect time for that. I'm expecting the route to come to the outside of the field. In man coverage on second down, complete opposite. Going towards the middle, I come down full speed downhill. In a late ball, I get my second INT of the day. Offense can't get nothing rolling, but that's not going to stop me from trying to make plays. Getting back, sitting at the top of this route, giving this quarterback that look, getting over, picking up interception number three ski of the game. Tough loss last week. And even though we're projected to win this one this week against Charlotte, this is not a team to sleep on. We got to bring our A game, and we're going to be packing up, going back to the crib with an L. I can already peep their game plan. Hand it off, ground and pound to the can't no more, and catch us by surprise with the pass, but I'm all over it. On the ground with the run and in the air. They done marched their way down to the red zone. And the read option right here on first and goal would have worked out to perfection if I can come all the way across the field and make this tackle. But every route and receiver sewn up and covered, boy, Carson Black got the biggest hole in the world in front of him. He walks through untouched, unbothered. A five wide look on a crucial third and six, protecting my deep zone, but a 10 yard curl. Are you crazy? Coming downhill, picking up this interception, man, giving offense some great field position. I'm out here receiving on the kickoff team, trying to get this win by any means possible. Great blocks up front, taking off to my left, down in numbers, nothing but daylight in front of me. I get tripped up just before I can score. A third and 20, you gotta know I love this. Playing some off, man, another 10 yard curl, another crazy interception, diving one hand. It's like clockwork at this point. And we've been creating turnovers at a high clip. And all I ask of the offense, man, just capitalize in some way, shape, or form. And them little three points they went and got us, dog, I'll take it. It's better than nothing. But to only be up nine points on a lesser opponent, that's just pathetic. They got to do something with these possessions we've been giving them because we've been going crazy. Last play of the game, and without a doubt, they go back to over-liable, the 10-yard curl. I'm coming down, picking up my third in the session of the game. I'm self-proclaiming I'm the number one DB in the entire nation. We kick off another home game this week against Louisville, and they already marched their way down into the red zone. And on a crucial third and goal, I don't contain the outside. My teammate comes flying in, picking up the tackle. Offense went to put some more points on the board. And here on first down, where should have been a tackle for loss, my teammate gets blocked. But y'all know I'm cleaning up crew specialists come through and straight up whack this running back. As much as I hate to say it, they refuse to put the ball in the air. They having a little bit of success, but putting it on the ground, I'm going to come through, especially on my side of the field, and make a tackle. This my message and mentality for every team that's scared to put the ball in the air against us. You want to keep running it? I'm going to come down. Here, I'm a punisher running back every chance I get. Now we off in that fourth quarter where every single possession is important. The guys come away causing a forced fumble, and we scoop it up, putting offense in great position to put some more points on the board. First and ten, I got man coverage. I'm all over this route from start to finish, and I'm surprised when I see the ball actually coming my way. I high point that bit, come down with interception. I thought I was gonna walk out of here with no picks on the day. Another first and ten situation. Again, backed up in their own territory, and this is where I struggle in the zone coverage, especially a deep zone, having to split the difference. I give up some money inside trying to play the outside way too much and that's one of the beautiful things about waking up every day and focusing on your craft when it comes to man coverage i'm an expert when it comes to my technique and execution but when it comes to that zone i definitely got some work to do for sure
to kick things off against Houston. They convert on a clean third, and they find a wide-open receiver in the middle of the field. We get the tackle around the 50. And to nobody's surprise, they hand the ball out to their running back, Logan Compton. He walks in freely to pick up the touchdown. And the story for us this season is going to be more the same just about every week. Hand the ball out, ground and pound. Everybody tries to attack us in the running game because we kind of weak up front. And all week going into this game, I've been telling the guys, especially my DBs, we got to come down and make these tackles because we let this running back get loose. He will run all over us. Finally get some action in the passing game here on first and 10. And by the time I look up, dude caught the ball and was off to the end zone. I look back, bro. He is in that bit for 70 yards. Damn. But despite my pitiful efforts to try to make a play on that ball, offense go down, put some points on the board themselves, putting us up 10 points, and we needed that. It's second and seven, they go with the read option. My dog is all over Logan. Quarterback thought he had a free run to the first down. We coming away with a big time tackle. Out of pressure on them. We in the fourth quarter, they have to put the ball in the air. I give up the first down here on third and five across the middle, but I guarantee you my time is coming. They going for it on a crucial fourth and seven situation. Dropping back into my deep zone, receiver gunning straight at me. The ball is thrown my way. He think I'm sweet. I come away with the PBU. Stop trying me. One on one coverage with their best receiver in all of this space. At this point, picking up that 10 yard curl is my specialty. Coming away with my first interception of the game, and that's going to put these boys to bed. In our biggest matchup of the season so far, number 11 ranked Memphis is so ugly out here, pouring down right now. I'd be surprised if either offense put the ball in the air more than five times. With that ball not being thrown, no opportunities to make plays on the ball in the air, you know what that means. I get to come downhill all day long and lay that wood. But on third and goal, we load up this side of the field just for Memphis to walk into the end zone, scot free on the completely opposite side of the field. And they hand the ball off here on second down. I juke out this receiver trying to pick up the block for his guy coming downhill, straight up blasting is running back. That's a nasty hit. They go with another handoff here on second and six. I'm doing everything I can to avoid 18 trying to pick up this block for his guy. I'm telling you, nobody is going to save these running backs for me today. Midway through the second quarter on first and 10, not expecting them to throw the ball whatsoever. They actually do put it in the air. They throw it short, of course, dog. I'm fiending for an opportunity to catch a pick. Hanging out over here on the wide side of the field, I got somewhat of a bubble flat zone and they actually throw the ball my way, but the rain is coming down so heavy. I don't even see it to the last second. I'm diving trying to scoop that thing. Angle. Going into the third quarter, defensively, we stood tall, but offense, they went and made it happen. We got the lead in between the rain and how tough we're playing defensively, dog. Memphis don't stand a chance. 7-1, and one, ranked number 11, it don't matter. We got top 10 ranked 8-1 and one SMU at the crib this week, and walking out of here without an interception is unacceptable, and it's just not happening. And based off how much they throwing the ball here early in the first quarter, I know for a fact I'm going to get at least a few opportunities, and they got some dogs over there at receiver. But I'll take our secondary over there wide receiver core any day of the week. And offense went to score first, and that immediately applied pressure on them to go put some points on the board. I knew it wouldn't take long for this quarterback to trap me. Second and 16, trying to connect with his number one receiver. I come down with the pick, but what I do after is nasty work. Putting on the brakes, getting up field, crazy return. But of course, to start the second quarter, first thing they want to do is put the ball on the ground. But I'm going to continue to make a statement, almost knocking Kamar Wheaton's head off. But even though the drive been tough for them boys, they done made their way down into the red zone. And I thought I had to jump on this wide receiver screen. They fooled us, toe tapping, catching the back of the end zone. A little bit over three minutes left in the quarter a crucial third down. They love taking these deep shots. I'm all over this when getting back, coming down with the interception. My second of the half, we balling out. I said I was going to walk out of here with at least one, but to have two in the first half, I love that. But what I'm most ecstatic about, dog, the offense actually capitalizing on these turnovers, I love that even more. And I done capitalize on a few opportunities of my own today. Every chance I've gotten to tap one of these running backs, I done went all out. And the second he got his head around, he was faced with the Reaper. It's one thing to beat and then straight up demoralize an eight and one top 10 ranked team but to do it at the crib in front of this home crowd we showed up and showed out if you would have told anybody a single soul that USF would be ranked top 25 by the end of the season, dog, they would have probably laughed at you. And sitting at a nice 7 and 3, we got UCF on the road in one of our first away games in a while. And we kicking this one out, blowing a hole in their quarterback's chest. But to kick this one off in the first quarter to start a strong drive, they get into the end zone first. But personally, I think he fell a little bit short. And here we go on first down, the first player of the second quarter, splitting this difference back here in this zone. I could have jumped this route, but my eyes, they got to be in multiple places at the same time. I have to sacrifice and give something up to make this play. And for the second time, just in the first half, they already back in the red zone with a strong drive, but my boys on the other side of the field, they try to throw this one short, coming away with a pick. That's what I like to see, making big plays when we need them the most. On first and 10, got a deep zone with one guy on my side of the field, dropping back, and he runs that 15 yard out towards the sideline. You know this money for me, but my dog is mirroring me, jumping the route before I could. I love that, but don't take away my picks. And it's looking like it's gonna be one of them days. Defense is going crazy, getting all the stops, stepping up, making the play 
plays and offense ain't cashing in on nay thing. Even with great field positioning, we can't get three. And defensively, we can make plays all day. But if offense ain't applying no pressure, UCF can take all the time in the world, have a few failed drives, and still hold all the momentum. Back with another red zone attempt. Even though I guessed the pass correctly, I wouldn't say this 100% my fault, but playing way too far off my zone, nobody can come down and make a play on this receiver. That was completely my mistake. I'm going to make up for it, though. Second and three, baiting up this route. I get downhill with a diving one-handed pick. We needed that interception. Offense has to cash in. I got that pick and gave offense prime field positioning. But what do we get out of them? Nothing. Zero. Nada. UCF is not a bum school or a bum team by no stretch of the imagination, but not scoring through three quarters is outrageous. I guess offense left everything they had on the field last week when we played a top 10 ranked team. They blew them boys out the water, put so many points on the board, just played on a different level. I guess they have nothing left in the tank for this week. My defenses came up with three turnovers this game, all three being picks, but you can go in and add one more, making that four on third and 12 with another threatening drive, coming away with my second of the game, but knowing our offense, they ain't gonna do nothing with it. First play on D against Rutgers, I'm dropping back. This receiver runs the slowest slant I've ever seen in my life. I beat him to the ball by a mile. Then even in the snow, I'm getting loose, cutting around the edge, getting to the end zone for a pick six. And then we come back later on in the first and the read option works out to perfection. They walk in, picking up their first of the game. And it's almost like this offense is on rinse and repeat, marching down the field, getting to the red zone, read option, back-to-back -back possessions to get in for another tug. We had damn near a perfect start, a score from offense and defense to kick off in the first quarter, but now defense were struggling. Rutgers offense is clicking on an entirely different level, marching their way down with ease and then getting into the end zone with the run and the pass. Coming into this game, I don't think nobody expected us to be tied up at 21 to kick off the third quarter, but this offense is moving, and at this point, I'm just trying to bait anything up I can to get a pick. After kicking this one off with a pick six, I've seen little to no action. I'm basically forcing anything to come my way, giving up my zone, all the space in the world, opportunity. I'm just trying to make something happen on my side. But even though I'm getting a little bit frustrated, I know I got to remain focused, calm, collected, and most importantly, be patient. Let the game come to me. I got to trust my guys. So going into the fourth quarter, the guys finna get an earful for me. We got to finish the season with a dust. So we can get at least a solid bowl game. And with us only being down six, we're more than capable of not only tying this game up, but actually capturing this lead. It's all about that fourth quarter dominance. Who going to hit that extra gear? It's first and 10, four receivers split wide, dropping back into my zone. I'm surprised they're putting the ball in the air, baiting up my zone to the best of my ability. He launched it towards the sideline. Coming away with a pick, I got that dog in me. Offense did their job, went down, took the lead, and then Rutgers came right back on special teams. A 99-yard kick return to the crib. We lose our final game of the season in the worst way possible. USF and FAU, two Florida teams matching up in the New Mexico Bowl. Even though we out here competing today, it's a beautiful thing when you think about it. Even though our regular season ended with an L and we didn't finish out with the record we thought, a pretty mediocre record if I say so myself, I still think our future is bright. I mean, just within my freshman season, me alone, I've emerged and established myself to be one of, if not the best player in all of college football. Offensively, we were hella inconsistent, but I can see that improving as we go forward, especially going into next season, recruiting and the transfer portal. I think we can improve greatly. And defensively, without a doubt, but I'm finna be out here recruiting like crazy. It won't be hard to convince a lot of players to come in, defensive linemen, DBs, linebackers, whatever, to come in and play with myself. Grabbing my first interception just in the first half, playing some heavy off man here on first and 10, coming down, snagging this ball away, getting into the end zone, not only for my second pick, but a pick six. Two picks in the first half in a bowl game is nasty work, even for myself. But dropping back here on second and 10, before we go into the second half, picking up my third interception of the first have going crazy bro two quarters in and i've already secured a triple pick game that's got to be some kind of record for a bowl game never been done unseen but you've seen it here today putting on my best display of work dropping back playing some more of this glorious off man coverage i see the curl you know what time it is working on my speed during the season is coming clutch picking up interception number four off to the crib for pick six number two on the day we don't have a huge lead but if we manage to pull out this win this will single-handedly go down as the best performance and the best win in a bowl game in history. And I say all that based off my performance alone. Only thing that'll make this better if I play both sides of the ball. But locking in on my cornerback play has been key to my success this season. I ain't gonna lie, that would be pretty crazy if I did play both sides of the ball. That's something to consider going into my sophomore season, especially pitching that to the coaches. But the way I've been playing on defense, that might not be too hard to sell. I dominated my freshman season. Over 80 tackles, but what I was most focused on, catching them picks. 26 on the year. I'm going for 30 my sophomore season.